This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We are officially into week number one of the 2024 NFL season with the season kickoff just now two days away, which means it is time to finalize preseason futures and it's time to dig in and take a look at the week one lines. But talking to Olivia Moody, Liv Mood is going to swing by for today to break down her thoughts on the preseason, talk about the offseason futures and week one as well. This is Covering the Spread, a FanDuel research podcast. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor for FanDuel Research. Research. Joined here as mentioned by Olivia Moody. Check her out on X at Live Moods. Find her work on the FanDuel social accounts, Gorilla Sports, bunch of other places as well. Live. Happy week one to you. How are you doing today? Oh, I am so excited. I cannot believe we're already in the thick of it. I mean, it's like truly blink, you blink your eyes and you're back into the next season. It feels like as a Broncos fan, I was just mourning the Kansas City Chiefs. <laughs> win and now we're back into it and obviously preseason as you know historically people don't typically enjoy betting on preseason or even watching it because there's so many question marks you're not really seeing your favorite players but there were a few teams in the preseason that either caught my eye in a negative way or caught it in a in a positive way so it does make you that much more excited to get this week fired up already we've got what two days until thursday night football so i'm i'm so excited thank you so much for having me on and i can't wait to dive on into how we make some money this season now i don't want to spoil your preseason takeaways but any thoughts on bo nicks based on what you saw during august from him yeah so honestly i think at some point you're probably going to ask me about about the futures market any yep. futures that i've got and i really do love bo nicks for offensive rookie okay opinion. At least for a sprinkle, when you get odds that good, it is worth a sprinkle. I think Bo Nix is in a position with the Denver Broncos where what we saw last year from the Broncos, and I know it better than anybody. I'm a fan, and it was painful, and it was misery, and it's been that way for a very long time. But I think what we saw last season was Sean Payton having to clean up other messes before he could really coach, and he could really put forth the X and X's and O's of football. Uh, I think we know he's notorious for elevating quarterbacks, as long as those quarterbacks know how to follow his command. And I think that's what we saw not working with Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson likes to be a flash quarterback. He likes to do things his own way. He likes to be the hero in so many ways on the field. And I just don't think that works for Sean Payton. I think Bo Nix is a very smart quarterback. He knows exactly how to follow command by Sean Payton. And what we're seeing from him is when he had the ball, obviously there was a three quarterback competition rotation going on there between Jarrett Sidham, Zach Wilson and Bo Nix, but Bo Nix, he just, the offense ran smoother. He just seemed so calm, cool, and collected. And as a rookie, he's already playing very confident. And I know it's only preseason, but very optimistic with what I saw with Bo Nix. Um, believe it or not, I, I did sprinkle on offenses, uh, offensive rookie of the year for him and, and the over on the Broncos win total as well. I think Vegas only giving him five and a half games feels like an insult, but I also get it because yeah, there have yeah. really been many seasons with the Denver Broncos where you feel optimistic, but I am feeling very optimistic about the Broncos. Is that normally how I feel and then I'm normally let down? Of course, but <laughs> we're finally seeing a quarterback that I think can do exactly what Sean Payton wants. So yeah, feeling really good about Bo Nix and what I saw in the preseason. A team in transition, but a fun team for once, which is, yeah. uh, I think that'll be that'll be fun to watch for them this year. Totally. We'll talk about those futures you discussed uh, later on. We'll talk about some week one bets that Liv likes as well here in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the Covering the Spread podcast feed wherever you get your podcast back here four times this week five times next week here on this podcast feed as well also up on the FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV plus so go to FanDuel.com uh, slash watch and log in your FanDuel account to watch covering the spread the heat check DFS podcast up and Adams all in the same place you can log in again FanDuel.com slash watch or download the FanDuel TV plus app on your Amazon Fire Apple TV a Roku device for watching over on YouTube leave us a thumbs up over there football is back and there is no better place to get in on the NFL action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now all customers can bet $5 
and get a three free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out of market game. Plus, with FanDuel, you don't even have to leave the app to access real time stats and data to help you make even more winning bets. Download FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, must be 21 plus and present in select states or 18 plus and present in DC. Offer ends 9 22 24. After a three week free trial, NFL Sunday ticket full price will be automatically charged seasonally cancel any time no refunds terms restrictions and embargoes apply youtube tv base plan required to watch youtube tv redemption requires a google account and current form of payment gambling problem call 1-800-GAMBLE or visit fanduel.com slash rg call 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in connecticut visit md gambling health in maryland Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in New York. Now, Liv, we've had you on the show here before, but we've gained some new listeners since then, so I want to ask you about your overall NFL betting process for people who may be new to your work here on Covering the Spread. Yeah, I think uh, the NFL, I mean, listen, even, even the professionals – are going to lose money. I think the first step in my process is acknowledging that I'm going to lose um, often. And that's just the nature of what we do. I do really, really like to spend time in the first week. I, I really do treat week one as a trial. You know, I think that preseason in a perfect world, preseason would be that, but we aren't seeing the starting quarterbacks. We're not seeing the starting defense or the offensive linemen. So it's kind of hard to gauge what you're going to get from these teams in week one. So I really try to eliminate the pressure in week one. Um, I really, really encourage people to have smaller unit sizes. Take it easy. We've got 18 weeks of this, yeah. people. And I promise <laughs> you, it's going to feel like it lasts forever. You're going to have weeks where you are ice cold. You're going to have weeks where you're like, what is going on? And sometimes your process actually does have to change mid-season. What was working at one point in terms of finding that edge or, or you know, handicapping player props even uh, may not work by week seven. You know, you may have to make some adjustments. You may have to make some changes. So in week one, I really do treat it like a trial period. This is where I've got the NFL red zone fired up watching every game all at once NFL Sunday ticket I'm watching them all happen so that I can get a good idea of what to expect as the season progresses but I do love a player prop I think that oftentimes even in this Thursday night football game we've got some big time players that are out I'm looking at who is going to compensate for that player being gone because the game still has to go on, right? Patrick Mahomes still has to throw the ball to somebody. So I find edges like that. I typically look at injury reports. Um, and I do think betting trends are important. How teams have covered the spread historically typically stays the same. You know, you've got some teams that are really great as road underdogs. You've got teams that are great as home favorites. We know how week one looked for the Chiefs last season. Obviously, they didn't get off to a great start. They kind of made people a little worried. Turns out it didn't matter at all. Well, <laughs> but um, I do think, yeah, week one for me is kind of a trial. Uh, I really, really like to focus on quarterbacks. I mean, we know this is a quarterback driven league, just like the NBA. When you're looking at props, it's a star driven league. So quarterbacks do matter um, because unfortunately, in order for your receiver to hit their over on receptions, you've got to have a quarterback that's accurate and can get them the ball. So I do like looking at injuries and, and really focusing on on quarterbacks specifically, as well as defenses. I think that when you're looking at the NFL as a whole, the over under market, the total market is is a really good one to attack because oftentimes, you know, I've got an under that I like this week simply because there's two top 10 defenses going head to head. And to me, uh, we know offenses tend to start slow in this, in the early start of the season. So yeah, the, the, thankfully FanDuel makes it really easy because there truly is a market to bet on anything. You could bet the first half total if you don't like the whole game total. So FanDuel makes it really easy to follow and navigate and figure out what works for you. But my process is pretty simple. I, I take week one um, with a grain of salt, if you will, and I really truly study every game, every player, every quarterback. Um, and then week two, that's when that's when I start getting a little more hard on myself. And when I'm not yeah. hitting 
Nets, I start getting a little more agitated. <laughs> and I think the reminder that it's a long season is important because we're all excited. The NFL is back. We all want to fire away, but just keep in mind, it's a long season. There's a lot more runway left to go after this. Okay. Now, you talked about the preseason a bit and how it's tough to get a lot of firm takeaways from what we see there. And that is very true, but there can occasionally be some legitimate signals we get from those games, from training camp, from injuries even, uh, throughout August. So were there any teams or players you bumped up or down based on what you saw during the month of August? Yeah, this one's kind of tough for me because I was really, and still am, a huge fan of Anthony Richardson. Obviously, we know he went down with a with an injury last season. I think he has a very electric and exciting style of play. Um, but I also think that his style of play is a little dangerous. And I do worry about the health and the longevity of his body if he continues to play the way we saw him play before he got injured last season. He he struck me as somebody in the preseason that was strugg- struggling a little bit with accuracy. And I think that's obviously something you need as a quarterback in this league. Like I said, love his style of play. I think he's very unique. He's very physical. Um, but I had him very high up before he got injured last season. And I felt like watching him with a little bit of inaccuracies um, made me a little worried about what we're going to see from him this upcoming season. So I would say I bumped him down a little bit. I bumped Bryce Young up. I think Bryce Young is taking strides forward. Um, You know, obviously he took over a franchise that was struggling. He was the first overall pick. So you know what you're going to kind of walk into with stuff like that. Um, I bumped him down a little bit. We didn't see a ton from a quarterback, a rookie quarterback like Caleb Williams, but I think we're setting the bar a little too high with the Bears. I really do. I'm not as high on the Chicago Bears as everybody else is. I think Caleb Williams is going to be a great quarterback, but I don't think it's going to happen like this. Um, Even Vegas having their line for win total set at eight and a half feels outrageously high to me. So I wouldn't say I bumped Caleb Williams down, but I'm not bumping him up the way I think most people are and the expectation that most people have for him. Obviously, you know, I was very excited about what I saw from Bo Nix. That was another big preseason takeaway. Um, So yeah, overall, that's kind of, I was really looking at the quarterbacks. You know, I think that's kind of how I treat preseason anyway, is looking at those rookies, looking at some of the guys that are younger, that are still trying to get their feet wet. And ultimately, very impressed by Mo- Bo Nix, impressed by what I saw from Bryce Young, and a little worried about Caleb Williams and Anthony Richardson. Those are probably my biggest takeaways right now. And with the Caleb Williams thing, kind of to back up what you said, you can keep him neutral, but if the market goes up on him, then it's a relative bump down. And so yeah. you can say, okay, I am neutral about him, didn't see anything that concerned me with him. But if the market suddenly gains a lot of steam on a certain person, yeah. then it winds up being a relative bump down, despite the fact you didn't change your opinion of him at all. No, exactly. All right. So let's take a look here at the NFL futures market because live. It's our final chance to bet some preseason futures before yes. the season gets underway. So any final futures you want to lock in before week one begins? Listen, very early on, I actually took the Eagles to win the Super Bowl for some reason. You know, you just have sometimes you have those bets that just come from your gut more than anything else. It's not your brain. It's no amount of trends or data that you've written down and studied. It really just is a gut. And I I don't know what what it is this year, but I feel very optimistic about Jalen Hurts. I feel very optimistic about the Eagles. So I did sprinkle a little bit on the Eagles to win the Super Bowl. I may pick another team by week two or three. You know how this works. It's like you you have those feelings. I I acted on the feelings. Um, So I do have a sprinkle there, but I do have some win totals um, that I was going to talk to you about. I'm sure you can guess the first one being, since I've already mentioned it, the Broncos over five and a half is one of the win totals that I feel very, very strongly about. Um, For good reason, Vegas doesn't have high hopes for the Broncos, and I totally get it. But I do think they are in a position where they can win over five and a half games. I love this bet. I'm still going to ride true to it. When I got it, it was plus money. Um, So I'm feeling pretty good about where I got it at. I I believe it was like plus plus maybe 102. Um, So nothing super great, but better than what it is now. So really happy with that bet. Um, Chargers under eight and a half wins. Now, it's not because I don't have faith in Justin Herbert, but I do think that this Chargers team has a lot of 
question marks right now. A new coach, while it can be a great thing, and I think it will be a great thing for this Chargers team because their old coach to me was just a liability. Um, I think a new coach will be great for them, but I don't think they're going to get great right away. I think there's going to be some growing pains. We know Justin Herbert lost quite a few weapons in the offseason. So I've got the Chargers going under. They're in a competitive division. I know the Broncos. Hopefully they will be more competitive. Um, but yeah, I'm not feeling super optimistic in the Chargers this season. I think they could get there, but don't feel certain about that just yet. I like the Seahawks over seven and a half wins. For, for some reason, the Seahawks are just Maybe it's my West Virginia ties and the fact that I'm a big <laughs> Smith girl, that could be part of it. But I do feel like them getting um, pretty much the hottest defensive coordinator on the market as their head coach. And to me, defense to them has always been their downfall. Uh, I think that they're in a good position to do really well. I think they've got some young very talented offensive weapons. I do trust Geno Smith, believe it or not. I think he's a consistent quarterback and can get you where you need to be in terms of wins. And like I said, finally, Bears under eight and a half. Eight and a half just seems like a very high number to me. I mean, it just to go from being the Bears that are laughable to then all of a sudden hitting over to eight and a half wins because you acquired Caleb Williams to me, it's not impossible, but I don't see it happening. So I do like the under there for the Bears. Um, and that's about it for my win totals. Besides that, as you know, Bo Nix for Offensive Rookie of the Year. I believe that Caleb Williams right now is the favorite, which again, maybe we're putting too much pressure on Caleb Williams. It seems like we are depending on this man to truly flip this franchise um, right side up after it's been upside down for so many seasons. So I guess I'm just not buying into that. Um, but I do, again, like sprinkling on Bo Nix at the value that you get him at. I think it's worth a sprinkle. So those are my futures for now. I'm sure we'll add a few more um, just in the nick of time before the season starts and the odds start to change everywhere. So yeah, Bo Nix 11 to 1 right now at FanDuel Sports, but Caleb Williams plus 120, pretty restrictive on that number. Jaden Daniels 6 to 1, Marvin Harrison Jr. plus 650 as of right now as well. Malik Neighbors down to 15 to 1. Did at least catch my eye, but uh, obviously, if there are this many starting rookie quarterbacks, that's going to get a lot of attention Absolutely. in that market for sure. Now, you've alluded to this. You, you alluded to you like quarterbacks who can get us good prop numbers, can allow our receivers to go over their totals. And we kick things off with four pretty good ones, Liv, because we have Patrick I... Mahomes versus Lamar Jackson, Jordan Love against Jalen Hurts. Doesn't get a whole lot better than that. So across those two primetime games to kick things off, any bets you like in those? Yeah, I, I really was focusing mostly on the Thursday night football game. I'm sure by Friday, I will have some things cooked up for that Packers Eagles games. Because again, we saw, um, you know, you think who is the Eagles rival? It's typically the Dallas Cowboys. And we saw the Packers shut the Cowboys down in the playoffs last season. I think they surprised a lot of people. And more importantly, I think Jordan Love proved that the Packers can win without Aaron Rodgers. I think Aaron Rodgers um, leaving was a big blow to Packers fans everywhere. But I think Jordan Love showed, hey, I have been underneath Aaron Rodgers for years learning and absorbing who he is as a quarterback. And we really did see that the moment he stepped on the field. But I do have some Thursday night football stuff for you in terms of that Ravens Chiefs game. I mean, how blessed are we to start our NFL with that matchup? I think that's that's incredible. But um, I don't know how I feel about the total here. And maybe you can chime in here, Jim. I, I really am, am stuck because the Ravens <laughs> last season were 10, 8, and 1 with unders. And Kansas City was 14 and 7 with the total going going under. But how do you take an under in a game like this? It feels illegal. It should be illegal. I just don't like the feeling at all. We've obviously got Baltimore acquiring Derrick Henry, and we know Patrick Mahomes. Anytime Patrick Mahomes is on the field, the over to me is something that you can probably put your money on because it's Patrick Mahomes and he's got a few more weapons. Um, so the under the total here, I'm not loving. And I will tell you, I also don't love laying the points with the Chiefs considering how great um, the Ravens are as underdogs in terms of covering the spread with Lamar Jackson as the quarterback starting on the field. So don't love taking the points in this game at all. So I do like Chiefs money line. It's hard not to back the defending champs here. Trust me, I hate it as a Broncos fan. I absolutely hate it. But I have learned the hard way way too many times. It is not smart to fade Patrick Mahomes. It's just not. It typically does not end well for me. So I do like Chiefs money line here, but I am looking at a player prop as as well, we know that Hollywood Brown is doubtful for this game, who I think was is going to be um, a pretty important piece to this offense for these for the Chiefs this season. 
So instead, I'm liking Rasheed Rice over five and a half receptions in this game. He's coming off of a season where he was kind of a leader for Patrick Mahomes on offense. 79 receptions, 938 yards, 58.6 yards per game, and seven total touchdowns. So I like Rasheed to be a guy for Patrick Mahomes that's relatively reliable because we saw that last season. So I'm looking at over five and a half receptions for Rice in this one with no Hollywood Brown out there, as well as uh, Chiefs money line. Don't love the value for Chiefs money line, but I also just don't feel comfortable laying the points with this Raven, with uh, this Ravens team or with the Chiefs for that matter. So Chiefs money line and Rice over five and a half receptions is what I'm looking at for this one. Okay, so the reception number for Rasheed Rice, five and a half over is minus 138. Uh, that's where we're seeing value in the player prop market. The money line at minus 152 right now for the Chiefs in this one. You asked me about the total. And so I have my own set of numbers here for totals, spreads, money lines, et cetera. And it's at 46 and a half right now. I'm at 46.48. So no value. Complete stay away from me. And it's the same thing with the spread. So I had the Chiefs there by 2.78. Market's at three. You were talking about keeping in mind how long this season is. I have to do that because I got nothing in this game. It's like the first game of the year. We're super excited about these games, see, you know, getting them pop up. I got nothing here. I have some interest in some receiving yardage props for Rashad Bateman and Xavier Worthy. Now, if Bateman's healthy, uh, Worthy should be out there a bunch as well. That's, but like, another, that's another name yeah. I wrote down. Xavier Worthy to me, I think, is an, a, a player that I would look at in this game for sure from a from a yards perspective. Yeah, he's at 44 and a half right now. Bateman's at 27 and a half, 28 and a half. He went up a yard uh, during the day today. Love to see that from my Rashad Bateman dynasty share. So I need that. Uh, yeah. At least some interest in Rashad Bateman out there. Not just from me, but it's a tough game. So I think that the the Rasheed Rice call out good, given that he is uh, not going to be suspended, at least just to start this year. It should yeah. be back out there in his typical role once again. All right, Liv, let's open up the board. Any other week one bets you want to lock in right now for this week? Yes, I do. I've got I've got my little notes here. I'll flip to them. You know how, you know, as you, like I said, the season is long. There's <laughs> going to be a lot of bets that you like, a lot of bets that you want to bet. Um, it's okay to not bet. I want to yeah. just yeah. confirm what you just said. It's okay to not have something that you like. I think the moment you start trying to force bets is when yeah. you start getting into some trouble. So if you don't like anything, you don't like anything. Just kick back and enjoy the week one season, the, the week one kickoff. Um, because football is back. And like I said, you've got 18 weeks. So don't force anything. I will tell you, I've got um an interesting one. Never thought I would be betting on the Panthers, but I love the number three and a half in the world of sports betting. I just adore it. So I'm liking the uh, the Panthers plus three and a half in week one against the Saints. For some reason, that one is calling my name. Like I said, love a three and a half number. Bryce Young showing a lot of optimism and upside in the preseason. So I like that number a lot. Um, I am also liking under in the Cowboys-Browns game. To me, this is going to be all about defense as well as these quarterbacks acclimating to their offense. We know offenses typically start pretty slow um, in the beginning of the season, especially in the first half of these games. Honestly, first halves in general, even by week 18, we can see offenses that are just trying to find their rhythm. So I really like two top 10 10 defenses, in my opinion. I think this game goes under, so I like the under there. Um, Caleb Williams to throw a pick. I'm not sure if it's available yet in the FanDuel Sportsbook, but like I talked about earlier, uh, I think there's a lot of pressure on Caleb Williams right now. Not saying he can't handle it, but I do think we may try to see him play a flashy game of football. And I think we could see him throw an interception and then they start relying on that run game pretty heavy in this one. And um, finally, an anytime touchdown. And I have to say, I love an anytime touchdown play. I just do. I, it's like it's like when you take, you know, a three pointer total, you know, it's like it's yeah. just electric when it cashes. I think Javante Williams for the Broncos anytime touchdown as much as I love Mike McDonald um, as a hire for the Seattle team. And I do think he will help out their defense quite a bit. This is still a Seattle team that had a 31st ranked rush, rush defense last season. So I think that McDonald can really um, help out this team in terms of their defense, but I'm not sure he can bring them from the 31st into a rush defense that I'm super concerned about. I like Javante Williams. We've seen him and Bo Nix all already have some pretty good chemistry. We've seen him get into the end zone. So really liking Williams. I'm going to take him as an anytime touchdown scorer. 
And that's all I've got. I've got a touchdown score. I've got an under. Um, and we've got the Panthers plus three and a half. It kind of sounds ugly when I say it out loud. <laughs> week one. But, you know, sometimes the ugliest ones are the ones that help us make money. So yeah. I can't. You can't discriminate Prof because it doesn't sound good. <laughs> Profit is ne never ugly. That's what I'll exactly, say. Um, exactly. With the Denver versus Seattle game, talking about uh, Javante Williams' touchdown prop, in those situations, you want to make sure you're seeing some value in the over because you want to make sure that the touchdown markets in general are undervalued. I actually did see value in the over here. I've got that game at 44.27, I believe, right now. Okay. And the market is uh, at 41.5 for that game. So, Seeing some more points than the market is right now for the Broncos versus the Seahawks. I also did take the under for that Browns versus the Cowboys game. Love it. And I, I, you were talking about feeling guilty about betting the Panthers. I kind of feel guilty, but I did take the Cowboys money line too. I'm kind of curious for your thoughts on the Cowboys this year. I know you're like an Eagles to win the Super Bowl, but any thoughts for you on the Cowboys overall yeah. heading into 2024? It's so interesting, Jim, because the Cowboys are one of those teams where I think they're they're always capable of winning games. They're always yeah. capable of having a very great regular season. And it's when they get into that postseason play that I just stop believing in them or trusting them with my money, let's say. Yeah. Um, I don't hate that at all. I really, really don't hate that at all. And I think that when you get when you can get the Cowboys in that underdog spot, to me, they kind of thrive as being an underdog because they know they're America's team, which I am in full favor of changing America's team. I've made <laughs> plenty of videos about that. I'm sure Cowboys fans are like, when can this girl shut up and get from <laughs> away from her? But I do think this Cowboys team, anytime you've got, and you know, there was that moment in the off season with CD lamb, um, Jerry Jones, making some comments that, yeah. that I think some people took the wrong way in terms of him, maybe making it sound like the Cowboys weren't in an urgent rush right. to bring him back, which I find hilarious because CD lamb in so many ways is the Cowboys offense. Yeah. So there might be something to prove the Cowboys just within themselves, just to the yeah. guy named Jerry Jones, who's at the top of the, of the mountain over there in Dallas. So I, I don't, I don't hate it at all. And to me, um, as much as I love the defense that the Browns bring, I don't know what we're going to get from Watson in week one. I think that they've always had some yeah. pains over there. That's always a team to me that starts very slow. You don't have a ton of faith in them. And then by the end of the season, you've got Joe Flacco of all people that's like right. tearing it up. So I never want to, those are two teams to me that you can't ever um, dismiss too early. But I do think if there's one offense of the two that I trust more early, it's the Cowboys. Yeah, they're they're on the road. They're outdoors. I understand the concerns. I understand why they're underdogs here, but I still think they're a bit undervalued at plus 120 right now. All right. That is all that we have here for week number one with Live Moods. Olivia Moody, check out Live on X at Live Moods. She'll be back with us next Tuesday. Once again, here is same time, same place. It's going to be a fun year, Liv. I'm so excited, Jim. Thank you again for having me on. I'll be here every Tuesday to chat with you and Hopefully we can uh, together make some money. Maybe we'll we'll come up with a little gym live parlay by week three or four when we're feeling a little more comfortable. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. That sounds good to hey. me. Thank you, Liv. Appreciate it. We'll talk to you again next week. All right. Again, you can find the show on the Covering the Spread podcast via the FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV Plus. Tomorrow, talking college football week two with Dr. Ed Fang giving his read on his best bets across week two in college football. We'll talk to all of you then. This has been Covering the Spread, a FanDuel research podcast.